Welcome in to Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. I'm Megan Payton. Guys, we officially made it to 24,000 subscribers. So thank you, all of you who subscribe to Seahawks Today. We love doing these videos, and we appreciate your support. The road to 25,000 begins today. So if you're new here or have not subscribed, go to youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Click the red button, whatever is easiest. I promise we are here to keep you in the know in all things Seahawks. All right, guys, we have a lot of free agency talk today. We've got some rumors going around. The first guy we're going to talk about, and the one that I'm probably more concerned about than most on this roster, is Quandre Diggs. Is he going to be back next year? He spoke on his future before free agency. He says he wants to play for the Seahawks, but he wants to be fairly compensated as well. Of course, Diggs had that heartbreaking uh, leg injury at the end of the season, just really really upsetting to watch upsetting to see him go through that pain physically emotionally just where he's at in this year where he's going you know going into free agency it was clearly something you don't like to see but here's what Quandre Diggs said about his future in Seattle he said no question I want to be back if we can make it work and it works out for both sides and I feel fairly compensated knowing that I'm a two-time pro bowler received all pro votes and one of the best if not the best free safety in the NFL, I have to be compensated as well. And I feel like I did everything the right way to be compensated as well. If it works out and they say they want to do it, let's get it done. All right. So Quandre Diggs wants to get paid. Does he want to be paid like the highest paid safeties? I'm going to say he probably does, at least somewhere in this range. Jamal Adams being the top paid safety. Thank you, Seahawks. $17.5 million per year. This might have a factor on whether or not they can pay Quandre Diggs, or definitely will have some factor. But you look at these other guys on this list, Buda Baker, Harrison Smith, Justin Simmons, Eddie Jackson, they're all getting paid a lot. The lowest on this top five list is $14.6 million per year. And then, obviously, you can see everything in between. I think Quandre Diggs is going to want to be right up in here on this list, especially with Jamal Adams on the same team. I know they play very differently, but he's going to see his contract and go, hmm, I can get something similar to that. But this year, I think it definitely, uh, he proved his case. I'd say he was probably the best Seahawks player on this team in 2021. He had five interceptions this year, 94 tackles, one tackles for loss, seven pass breakups. And he's had good years throughout his career, but 2021 just felt different for me. Of course, in 2020, still very good. 10 pass breakups, five interceptions. You can look at 2019, where he only played 10 games. 2018, you know, so on. But Quandre Diggs has proved himself. So I understand it. He's going to want to get paid. And that's why that leg injury was just so upsetting to see, because you know he... That could possibly lower his market value. It probably will, if we're being honest. I hope Seahawks to do him right and re-sign him. But I'll ask you guys this. It's our pinned comment for today's show. Do you want them to re-sign Quandre Diggs? Go to the comments, type Y for yes if you're a smart person. And if for some reason, some crazy reason, you're saying no, please justify yourself in the comments and let me know why you think that. All right, but we are going to move into some other free agents. Uh, Trent Brown, we talk about this offensive line needing some improvement. Well, Patriots offensive tackle Trent Brown has very much shown significant growth. I'd say this year he's been a really dominant player in this league. USA Today listed one free agent for each team to sign, and Trent Brown was the one that they wanted the Seahawks to sign. He's the right tackle for the Patriots. I think he's really good when he's playing. He has had health issues, weight issues, so that's a bit of a concern. He's 6'8". He spent time with the Raiders, spent time with the 49ers. Uh, Now here's the hard part, though. You think about what's he going to get paid. You know, offensive linemen that are really good stand out. They typically also want money. PFF is projecting Brown to get a two-year, $20 million contract with $15 million guaranteed. I'd say, you know, he does deserve to get paid well. Look at what he did in 2021. He had a PFF run grade of 71.6, so that's pretty good. Uh, Hurries, five, hits, four, sacks, one. So it's definitely not, you know, 
super impressive, but it's still better than what the Seahawks have. We'll get into their current offensive line depth chart. But first, let's throw it back to some more fun times in Seattle. That's why today I'm telling you guys about the Seahawks throwback year we have for you. If you guys go check this out at chatsports.com slash Seahawks gear, you can get some cool stuff up to 50% off. They've got long sleeve. They've got the button up all throwback stuff. And I love throwback here. You guys know that I talk about it all the time. It's my favorite kind of Seahawks stuff to wear. And so go take advantage of this deal while the sizes are still left and it is still up for sale. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks gear. All right, so we look at the Seahawks' current offensive line. Clearly, free agent decisions to be made. Brandon Shell, the big question mark. Is he going to be back in Seattle next year? I'd be surprised, especially the injuries that come along with Shell. Now, Jamarco Jones spent pretty much the whole season on IR. So the question comes up about Jake Curran. What's going to happen? What's his future like in Seattle? Is it someone that can be dominant, someone that can really help, you know, improve this offensive line from what we've seen of him during the time Brandon Shell was hurt. It wasn't fantastic. It wasn't terrible by any means. He did allow four sacks, but the biggest problem to me is that what we're just talking about that pass blocking and that's where the Seahawks need improvement. So I don't think Curran is the answer. In my opinion, I do think Trent Brown is clearly a step up. So if the Seahawks were able to risk, going after him, spending a lot of money, because as we said, he's probably going to want somewhere around a two-year, $20 million contract. That is significant for an offensive lineman. I do think he's earned it. It would be an upgrade. We do have other free agents, though, that I think should also be on the consideration list. You can't have everyone, so you're going to have to make some choices here. So I'll ask you guys this. Who do you want the Seahawks to sign? Maybe one free agent that you think it would be nice for Seattle to go ahead and pick up. All right, let's get into some other free agents that Seattle should at least consider looking at. These three positions are positions that they need some fixing. We've got tight end, cornerback, and edge. They could go with the guys they have, but are they going to be able to re-sign everyone that was on their roster this past year? So that's why I've got David Najuku, Brown's tight end, someone for them to look at. He's the first guy we are going to talk about. I'd say he's been solid, yet the problem with him is that he's a little bit inconsistent. He is an above-the-average tight end. Is he a top 10 tight end? Absolutely not. I do think it would be an upgrade, though, if they went and got Najuku and, you know, kind of probably passed on Gerald Everett or Will Not to say anything bad about them, but I do think Najoka would be an upgrade for Seattle. Again, what's the price? That's the biggest answer that they are going to need. If he is coming in with a very hefty contract proposal, it's not going to work out. If they can get the price right, though, I think they can clean up some of his inconsistencies and he could be a good addition for Seattle. All right, next guy we are talking about is Patrick Peterson. This cornerback room continues to be a topic of conversation, and I honestly feel for Seattle with everything that they went through at the cornerback position, all the way from Trey Flowers to Trey Brown getting hurt, Sidney Jones, DJ Reed, a lot of these guys stepped up big this season, and a lot of them are free agents. So there's a lot of question marks in the cornerback room. I'd love to see see Seattle bring back DJ Reed, but here's the thing. If they can't get everyone back, Patrick Peterson's a good option some might say he's a little washed overrated out of his prime that might be the case but I still think that Patrick Peterson could improve this cornerback room especially if they're not going to be able to keep the guys that they had this past year because I do think Sidney Jones and DJ Reed and I think Trey Brown's going to be a good addition when he's back and healthy but Patrick Peterson is always someone that intrigues me I think he could help Seattle to some degree All right, now we're going to talk about the position that I think is most important for Seattle to figure out, that is edge. The pass rush has been a terrible problem for Seattle, honestly. So you think about a guy like Emmanuel Ogba and what he could do for Seattle. He is, I'd say, again, slightly average, but also still someone that has shown dominance in the league. This past year with the Dolphins, he had 41 tackles, nine sacks, nine tackles for loss, 
one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. So are all three of these guys perfect players? Absolutely not. But I do think that they could provide something different to Seattle, and it's going to depend a lot on what they do with their own free agents and factors into whether or not they'll need someone like this. So I'm asking you guys right now, out of the three free agents that I mentioned, pick one of them to sign. Do you want David Najuku? Type DN. If you're taking Patrick Peterson, go type PP. Or type em- or EO for Emmanuel Ogba if you're looking for that pass rush improvement. All right, let's talk draft now because what's happening with Russell Wilson? Are they going to get a quarterback? What are What's the plan? Sam Howell. Sam Howell is Bleacher Reports listed one surprise draft pick for each team, and he had them. They had them going to Seattle. So could this actually happen? I don't know. I, I say. He was pitched as a second round pick for Seattle in this article. Here's the thing. If Russell Wilson is leaving Seattle, they are going to get a first round pick. So I don't see them going with a guy like Sam Howell. Now, if Russell Wilson decides to stay, what's the point in drafting Sam Howell? I don't think you need him. I think you've got to find enough backup in Geno Smith. I mean, if you're thinking long-term future, sure. But Russell Wilson still has plenty of years left. So my opinion on Sam Howell is he's been pretty good. He's going to be in that like top 10, top seven quarterbacks coming into this class this year. But also he wouldn't be my top choice for Seattle, especially if they're in a situation where they're without Russ. They can get a guy a little bit higher. They could get like Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett. Those are two names that I'd probably put above Sam Howell. So before we get into what he's done, I'll ask you guys, would you draft a quarterback in round two? So this is under the assumption that they did not trade Russell Wilson and that what is current, they only have a second round pick in there on four. They do not have that first round pick. So go to the comments right now. If you would draft a QB in the round two, type one for yes. Or if you would not, go to the comments and type zero for no. So Sam Howell, the best thing about him is his ability to run. That's where we've seen him stand out. In 2021, he had 828 rushing yards, a big, big jump from 2020. They really started to see more out of him there, 146 rushing yards back in 2020. Now, here's the thing you have to see, though. Completion percentage about the same, a little bit down this year, 62.5 this year, 68.1 last year. Um, I'd say the interceptions can be concerning, yet his consistency is what I worry about the most. Sam Howell could easily become someone that's very impressive in the league, and he absolutely might. But why would you waste a second-round pick on Sam Howell if you've got Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson, I really believe, will be in Seattle next year. At least that's like my honest hope. My gut feeling is that Russ will be back. But you never know. And if that isn't the case, then you've got to plan in advance. That might be drafting a guy. That might be trying to trade for someone else or signing someone in free agency, which there's pretty much no one. So I'm going to take that one even off the table. But Russell Wilson has to come up with a decision. And him and the Seahawks, they've got to figure this stuff out. It's not going to be a simple process. And of course, these rumors are going to keep on coming up but my vote is you keep Russell and if Russell's leaving I wouldn't take Sam Howell I'd probably take someone like Matt Corral or Kenny Pickett 